what you're going to get is a dramatic monologue from me, and it's from Leah's days in New Street. In fact, I'm his groom. And it's from the autobiography. And three things come out for me oh, um, about uh, her time in New Street. <coughs> The first is a wonderful sense of Cambridge, felt Cambridge. She married Will Manning, who wrote in Cambridge Labs. And she cycled, she acted in the NDC, she sang Mozart, she makes her attention to John's work. She was a Cambridge person through and through. And she had love the bands. And she has been emergingly captive for family and in-laws out there. And she was part of this community. And she uses the word community. Like, this is her community. But she was also a person who combined the local and the local, not just in justice in Cambridge, what was happening to those children, but in Africa and Germany after the war, across the world, and there was no contradiction. No contradiction about social justice here or globally. Finally, a strong sense of herself. Who she was? Well, she was impetuous. She was principled. She was strong minded. I'd even said it for bloody minded. She cared deeply about people. She refused to be silenced. So, this is Leah in her own words. She's growing up. She's going up all over the place, uh, but she comes to Cambridge to Hamilton. The principal is Miss Mary, and it's spelled wrong in the biography. Historians check those old things. The principal, Miss Mary Ann, sent for me. I want you to take a post in Cambridge, she said. My heart leaped up to live in Cambridge. It seemed like an improbable dream come true. Where do you want me to teach, Miss Anne? I asked. She stared out of the window. She ran. New Street. She. I asked her darkly. I looked at her in amazement. New Street. The practice school room cut a horror by every student. Oh no! I said involuntarily. She looked at me coldly. And why not afraid? She said, Do you, a socialist, think yourself too good for these poor children? You did your second practice at New Street, she began. My governing body is gravely dissatisfied with that school. The headmaster is weak. The staff are untrained and unqualified. And I promise to find them a tea student. If I cannot do that, we must give up New Street as a Hamilton practice school. She began drumming again. Uh, she looked at me a little, she knew she'd found my Achilles heel. She looked at me a little more kindly. Take 20 hours to think it over. Come back and see me again. Um, the next day I went to Miss Allen's study. I'll go to New Street, I said. New Street was a hard chore. I had between 70 and 80 children in the house, and I taught in a kind of annex to the main building. It was a huge room used on a Sunday as the ragged school mission. It was terribly cold in winter. The only had cause of heat came from a great big <coughs> ugly black stone stuck in the middle of the room and they called it a tortoise. But what really terrified me was a long window. This became a kind of picture. I never saw some ending source of entertainment for the ladies in the neighbourhood who gathered outside it mimicking my accent shouting to their offspring, behave, but more than not, bawling out their threats to me about what would happen if I laid a hand on Liz or 
Joe or Bill. Something I would never have dreamt of doing. Yet Kenny was the order of the day of the street. The head had a disconcerting way of thrusting into the classroom, sticky in hand, and what he euphemistically calls dusting the jacket of them little parishes, those little parishes. And it was always the most inoffensive in London. No class ever deserved less punishment than my punishment in London. Now, I had a room. Um, so, failing school, we would call it the total punishment. Poor, poor nights. Overworked, underfed, black and safe. I often wish for a little bit of real naughtiness. I didn't have enough spirit. When I look at the splendid and robust youngsters of today, Child events, school meal, school meals, welfare state. Seems incredible that children should have been so destitute as those in the first school and in a university channel. My children were out on the street late at night, on mill or bakers round in the winter. Blue children fingers, running noses, toes sticking out of grilling shoes for the whole of their poverty. Now in those days, feeding children at school was what was called permissive, that means option. It was at the whim of the local authority. I used to get the medical officer to order milk for the most maiden, but there was a regulation. Before milk would be authorised, he was certified that the children were already suffering from malnutrition. Already suffering. Anything been more monstrous? I was roused to fury by the death of a small girl in my house. I'd been to see her in a tiny attic room. She shared it with three brothers. Her mother was a widow. Nobody was allowed to say poor of the girl's wizened face and laboured deep breathing, the brave effort to give me a smile tore at my heart. I threw the oranges I bought onto the bed and I rushed out of the room. On the staircase, I was a pig. I fell into somebody coming in. It was her doctor. What's up here? Little girl Mary, you won't let that down off. I go. Miss Perrot, if that little girl was as strong as you, uh, she might have a chance. She's undernourished. She's no strength to fight, he said sadly. Then put the truth on her death certificate, I shouted glaring at him. Mary died of starvation. Pushing past him, I ran out into the street, but I heard him shouting after me. You are her teacher. Why don't you do something about it? I was the chair of the Cambridge Trades Council. At our meeting, I gave the chairman's report. I launched into a fierce denunciation of the missing feeding and told the story of Mary's death. I said the most wounded thing that came to my head. I blamed the education authority. There was a bombshell with the local press. I was summoned to appear before the education. <clears throat> um, to withdraw my outrageous remark, apologise, or take a month's notice to terminate my engagement at New Street. I did not want to leave New Street, where I'd started many innovations. I was willing to trust the children. I did not want to be in Cambridge, where I was building a place for myself and the community. But I do not intend to apologise or retract my accusation. So I made a formal request to my trade union 
to represent. She became, of course, not an MP, president of the NMT, a great fighter through her union. The official came, begged me to leave it in his hands. I'll do the talking, don't you interrupt, he said. I sat at the hearing, meekly at his side. I did not utter one word. I wasn't sure the Education Committee would be satisfied, but I had friends. Clara Rackham, Clara Ada Keynes, Rosalind Rover. I knew them through the National Council of Women, and they were in agreement with me. Although not very approving of my dramatic voice, no apology was ever asked for me from that committee, and no apology was ever given. What did I do at New Street? I started a new placement for the first in the country. I copied it from something I'd seen in the United States when I was with my parents. We used two rooms with them, followed by seven. So John did quiet games, hunting crafts, drama, puzzles, coming from the cold of the street. We gave them a mug of coffee for everybody. On the first night, a hundred children walked into the street. We had two volunteers. I went to Mrs. Ada Keynes, that's her name, the country room. Uh, Mayor Keynes as well, that uh, wonderful friends. You never do anything by ours, do you, she said. But she found the students, for Newnham and Gertner, and she collected money and friends. During the summer, the undergraduates came. They gave the boys a cricket on a golden comb. The children had never seen such dark jets as those young men and women gave them. Without that experience, those students would never have guessed that the proud and beautiful university town had this hidden backwater of poverty, or that the respectable women in capes and bonnets, their own college servants, on a disgraceful video, a uh, sweated wage, and she bought uh, for the bedders um, to organise them, were the mothers of these very children. Thank you.